King Charles vowed to serve with loyalty, respect, and love in address to the nation. King Charles III has pledged to serve the country with loyalty, respect, and love. In an emotional address in which he paid tribute to his mother, the Queen, saying, "May flights of angels sing thee to thy rest." Speaking with feelings of profound sorrow, he said, "Queen Elizabeth was a life well lived, a promise with destiny kept, and she is mourned most deeply in her passing. That promise of lifelong service I renew to you all today." In a speech that reflect his transition from her to throne to king. He also acknowledged his role must change. He spoke of the role and duties of monarchy, and the sovereign relationship with the Church of England, in which he said his own faith was rooted. I have been brought up to cherish a sense of duty to other, and to hold in the greatest respect the precious tradition, freedom, and responsibility of our unique history and our system of parliamentary government. He said, as the Queen herself. Did with such unswerving devotion, I too now solemnly pledge myself, throughout the remaining time God grants me, to uphold the constitutional principles at the heart of our nation. He added, "My life will of course change as I take up my new responsibility. It will no longer be possible for me to give so much of my time and energy to the charities and issues for which I care so deeply." But I know this important work will go on in the trust hand of others. To William, who now inherits Charles' title of Duke of Cornwall, he added another. Today, I am proud to create him Prince of Wales, the country whose title I have been so greatly privileged to bear during so much of my life and duty. Kate now inherited the titles of William's mother, Princess of Wales. A source says. The new princess of Wales appreciate the history associated with this role, but will understandably want to look to the future as she creates her own past. Charles said in his address, with Catherine beside him, "Our new prince and princess of Wales will, I know, continue inspire and lead our national conservation, helping to bring the marginal to the centre ground where vital help can be given." I want also to express my love for Harry and Meghan as they continue to build their life overseas," he said in the address pre-recorded at Buckingham Palace earlier on Friday. It was when paying tribute to his mother that he was at his most emotional. Her dedication and devotion as sovereign never wore through times of change and progress, through times of joys and celebration, and through times of sadness and loss," he said. I pay tribute to my mother's memory, and I honor her life of service. I know that her death brings great sadness to so many of you, and I share that sense of loss beyond measures with you all. On behalf of my family, I can only offer the most sincere and heartfelt thanks for your consolidants and support. They mean more to me than I can ever possibly express, and to my darling mama. As you begin your last great journey to join my dear late papa, I want to simply say this: thank you, thank you for your love and devotion to our family and to the family of nation you have served so diligently all these years. May flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. The final quote is from Hamlet. The king recorded the address in the blue drawing rooms of Buckingham Palace, where his mother recorded some of her Christmas message. On his desk was placed a posse sweet peas mixed with rosemary of remembrance. The vase featured three corgis at the base. The first glimpse of a grieving Charles as king was as he departed Burke Hall, his private home at Balmoral, to travel to London. Dressed in mourning black, he and the new queen consort were seen being driven to Aberdeen Airport from the Scottish estate. Where they had rushed to be at his mother's bedside on Thursday, though automatically king on the death of his mother, a moment he told one well wishers outside the palace he had tread, he will be formally proclaimed King Charles III at a historic accession council on Saturday morning, swearing and singing and declaration and oath in an ancient ceremony being televised for the first time. He held his first in-person audience with the Prime Minister Liz Truss at Buckingham Palace on Friday afternoon. 
devotion, and duty were the watchwords as tribute flooded in from around the world. Among them, a letter from the Dalai Lama to the king, telling him, "Your mother lived a meaningful life and dignity, grace, a strong sense of service, and a warm heart." Quality we all should treasure. The Corky community had lost part of our world, lamented K. Hawk, secretary of the Gwaldis Corky League Scottish Sector. Liz Trust, whose official appointed this week was one of the final public constitutional duties carried out by the Queen, led tributes in a crowded and emotionally charged House of Commons. It benches populated by MPs dressed in black. The death of the Queen heaps greater uncertainties onto an already uncertain world. For a Commonwealth country, now that the last link to empire is gone, it is truly the end of an area. Does it survive? Will Charles III become a head of state? That's it for today. Thank you and goodbye.